Hello, everybody. Lori Michelle here, president and founder of Running on Love. Today is a very important day for me. It might be equivalent to my birthday, really. I have made a decision, a very important decision, to reveal my true self to the world and tell the truth, a truth that I've been concealing for six years. Some of you know my truly true story about running on love and what's behind it all and why I'm so passionate about running on love. When I say some, maybe two or three of you. <laughs> the rest of you have no idea what's going on inside this mind and heart and body of mine. And today I've made a very important decision that it is time to take off the mask and come out and just be me. For better or for worse, I need to be myself authentically me and throw caution to the wind and just reveal who I am, what I am, and you decide. I, I'm doing this for very important reasons. While it's very freeing to do something like this and take off all the facades and just be yourself, it's very freeing and very wonderful. I'm not doing it for myself. In the end, I benefit, of course. It would be very healing. But I'm not doing this for me. In fact, doing what I'm doing today is very dangerous to me and puts my life and my, my whole existence in great peril. But I'm going to do it anyway. As the book, there's a book written, it's titled, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And that's what I'm going to do. My reason why? I have three. My three amazing children that I love with all my heart and all my soul. And if they're watching this, and I assume they will be, they're going to be cringing and screaming and so angry with me. But at the end of all of this, I hope and pray they will return to me and have an authentic relationship with me and love me for who I truly am and how I truly am and not for what they expect I should be. That we can begin a new chapter in our lives together. Regardless of the pain this is going to cause myself and initially to my three children, this is for them. And this is for everyone, for all who are willing to listen to me. Let me get right to it. If you've read my website, Running on Love, and now my new company website, Inspired to Give, I have a bio. It's also on LinkedIn. And on this bio, it tells a story about how I went deaf and how I crumbled and I created Running on Love, the charity, to lift my soul because giving is a source of joy. And I had to get out of my own way and help someone else who had problems. And while that is true, that is not the complete story. There is a very large part of my story that is missing from the public. And I decided that it is time to come clean and tell you what is behind Running on Love and me. Six years ago, when I crumbled and I realized I was going deaf, I did what I always did instinctually since I was a small child, and that is I reached for God. I have always had a very close connection with God and prayed to God in my own way. I never really followed any kind of organized religion, although I am Jewish and was raised going to synagogue occasionally, once a year, as many Jews do. I always believed in God since I was a small child, and I did what I always did do when I'm in trouble or I feel in pain. And frankly, I've always prayed to God, even when things were good, daily. 
I reached for him and I had come across uh, in recent years a prayer that I never knew was holy and a miracle making prayer really and when I needed a miracle I decided I'm going to reach for that prayer and the prayer is called the Shema. Shema actually means hear, coincidentally not. And I reached so hard for God through this prayer and I got an answer and boy did I get an answer. I woke up one morning to his voice. He spoke to me in plain English. It happened in 2009, in April, on Passover of all times, while we were on a college road trip to Evanston, Illinois. He woke me and I started writing. I didn't know it was him at first, but I grew to learn that it was him and that he and I journey together in this life, in this, in this body. I journey with the King. He's involved in everything I do, including sleeping, waking, cooking, everything. And I mean everything. I not only hear him in plain English and speak to him all the time, but I feel his presence within me. And what I mean by that is he can move my limbs and I actually feel him wiggle my fingers. He will stroke my hair. He will use my body so that I feel his presence in a physical way. I not only feel him, I not only hear his voice within me, but I can look to my left with my eyes wide open and I can see him. I can see his essence. At night, with eye covers on, I wear eye covers to conceal the light. I am face to face with the king. Blasphemy, crazy, if you're listening and you're angry, Put it on a shelf. Stop. Stop. I'm taking great risk with my life to share this with you because you need this. This is not for me. This is for all of you. And it's time. I've seen the images on the internet, on television, the world is out of control. Am I preaching to the choir? Are you watching? Are you tired of seeing innocent people march to their death to their death, and their heads being cut off with dull blades to inflict the most pain? Does that disturb anybody but me? I think not. I not only hear the king, who is my gatekeeper, I hear spirit who have passed on and left their bodies. He brings them to me. I communicate with them in plain English. They're very loving and supportive. Victims of terror are brought to me. People who have just committed suicide are brought to me. Famous people, not famous people, all people. So this is my revelation. I journey with the king. He speaks to me. And I, Lori, want to share him with you. It is my God-given gift and my honor and my privilege to share with you today. The God is real. The King is real. He's the real deal. Send up the flares. It's great news. But like with everything, my biggest blessing in my life has been my deepest 
tragedy. My life on earth with you is terrible. It's awful. I barely have a true friend. In fact, no one really knows me as I truly am other than the king. I correct that. There's one other soul. A beautiful prophetic rabbi. And I love you. He lives in Israel. And I didn't tell him anything. Hashem told him and brought him all the way from Israel to meet me, little me. And he took one look at me and he said, Hashem, it's true. So I'm not the only one. I have had this inside of me for six years, concealed it to keep me safe from harm. And I have undergone hell on earth. That's not what today's communication is about. I don't even want to relive it. I will at some point in time. I've been through hell. I've been branded nuts, crazy, whatever, selfish, demonic. <laughs> I'm not any of that. I'm just me. I'm just Lori. And I run on love. And I'm inspired to give. And that's what's behind it all. Running on love is a charity for all charities to teach unconditional acts of loving kindness and to bring us all together as one family under the umbrella of love and connect us for what our common bond is. God, God is behind this. Running on love is the model and the path and the vehicle to bring forward peace on earth for everyone. That's the truth. And the truth will set you free. So I'm here to bring you wonderful news. God is real and he wants you to run on love. So visit my website, runningonlove.org. And visit my new website, inspiredtogive.com. And please tell me that you will join the movement to heal our world and make this a better place for everyone. I'm not done with you yet. You're going to hear from me. This is free. This is from God. The internet, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, you think it's all for chit chat and gossip? No, the real purpose for all of that was one divine reason. This, peace on earth. It's a way to get you this information, the communications highway to bring forward redemption. Runningonlove.org Check it out. I love you. God bless you.